my name is Sharon and today I'm here to do a book review and discussion for Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Before you ask, yes, I did take notes. Actually, no one is gonna ask me that, never mind. But I did take notes on my phone. Everything is ready on my iPad. So I'm gonna have my iPad right here. I hope that no one is bothered by this. We're gonna talk about this book, of course, but but let me tell you the synopsis and my thoughts when I finish this book. So Chain of Gold follows so many characters because this is the first book of a sequel series of the Infernal Devices trilogy. This follows the children of those characters. They're all like related in some way and they're all friends. So we have like a large group of characters. But I will say that the main characters are Cordelia, James, and Lucy. This book takes place in 1903. Basically, we have the Carstairs family moving into London because of a problem that they have. There's like a group of demons attacking the Shadow Hunters in broad daylight. London is quarantined because these demons are poisonous. Everyone is very cautious and our group of characters are trying to find out what's going on, why the demons are so poisonous. And of course, some of them are trying to find a cure because there are people who got attacked and they were unconscious. But not just that, we have turmoil between the characters. It's really, really good and I guess that's my synopsis. The characters are so amazing. The plot is really good. I was taken by surprise quite a lot because of the main villain. We're gonna talk more about that. It's really freaking good. It's one of the best books she has out there because I feel like the writing has matured so much, okay? I think this is at least the 10th book. I don't know, let me see, six, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, seven, this is the 17th book from the Shadow Hunter Chronicles. I have a reading blog for this book, so I will have it linked down in the description box below and also in the cards. I want to mention that I read this book with my parabatai Sandy from Sandy Reads A Lot. I think that's basically it for my review. If you have read this book, then please stay so we can talk all about this book because I took a lot of notes. We're going to talk about every little thing, okay? But if you have not read this book, then please leave right now. Read this book, then come back and we can discuss everything that happens in Chain of Gold. And I'm very, very excited for this video, like I said. If you have not read this book, goodbye, okay? Leave right now. Goodbye. Goodbye. I really like my makeup today. Anyway, goodbye. <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that I cry on page 40. It's basically when we find out that Will lost his parents due to influenza. We see Jem going to the institute and he sits beside Will and Will just cry into his shoulder and we see Tessa, Jem, Will just so fucking sad, especially Will because he lost his parents and now Will and Tessa as parents, oh my god, they're amazing parents in my opinion. But not just that, they tell their kids every Things. They know a lot of things that happen in the Infernal Devices trilogy because they tell their kids literally everything that happened in that trilogy. I really love that because their kids, they know a lot. Like they know the fact that Benedict Lightwood was turned into a worm. They know about Mortmain. They know about the automatons. And real quick, I want someone to help me with this. So in this book and in a lot of like other books as well, we learn that the Herondales can see ghosts. And my thing is that how can they see ghosts? Was there a story about this? Because I don't remember any story about how only the Herondales can see ghosts. I need this answer. It's been bugging me since I feel like the dark artifices, I think. Someone, please help me, okay? Please let me know. Now, James Herondale, my poor boy James. I was taken by surprise when we see him going to like the demon world and then coming back. I know that he can turn into shadow because I read nothing but shadow. And um, yeah, he loves Grace. He loves her. I really want to mention this bracelet thing. We're gonna talk more about this in the beginning. It was mentioned multiple times that he has this silver bracelet. It belongs to Grace. Actually, it belongs to the Cartwright family because it used to belong to her birth mother. So he wears this bracelet and it was mentioned that he never ever takes it off. And now that I know what this bracelet can do, I'm thinking like, oh my God, was he ever in love with Grace for who she is? Or was he under the spell this entire 
time because like I said he has worn that bracelet for years I think since the age of 13 or 14 and he's like 17 in this book and now Cordelia I love love Cordelia so in the beginning we learned that she really likes James but not just that she loves him I was so touched when he calls her Daisy because it's like a nickname that um he gives her I ship Cordelia and James so hard they're perfect for each other but but there are so many shitty things that happen to them in this book. I'll talk more about it at the end, but still, it hurts. And now let's quickly talk about Jesse Blackthorn. I knew that he was dead because I read The Midnight Air. And in that short story, basically Tatiana called for Magnus and she wants him to help her resurrect her son. And he said no because Magnus Bane is a decent person. I've always known that Jesse Blackthorn is dead. And of course, in this, we see him as a ghost. But not just that, only Lucy can see him as a ghost. So Jesse is preserved by dark magic. So there's a possibility that he might come back. Maybe he will come back in the second book because there are hints that he will come back even though he lost his breath. Billio mentions the fact that Jesse is very important to this plan. I think he will come back because if you look at the family tree, he is married to Lucy Herondale. I think he's gonna come back. I just don't know how and honestly, I'm kind of scared because his mother is Tatiana Blackthorn and I don't like her. Unlike his mother, Jesse is a decent person. I was really surprised because his family suck, okay? I don't like Tatiana. I don't like Grace. The story of him dying, I could not believe it. Basically, he died at the age of 17. He really wanted his first rune. He was always a sick child, so his mother never wanted him to be like a real shadow hunter who carries runes. I believe children usually get their first rune at the age of 10. I could be wrong, but they get their runes really, really young. Meanwhile, for him, he got it at the age of 17. It backfired to the point where he fucking died. I feel so bad for him because that's just so young. Now, I really want to know more about him like why he was such a sick child but not just that why he cannot bury runes because like his first rune literally killed him i don't know if it's because he got it at the age of 17 or it's because of something else now let's quickly talk about this demon attack at the park so a bunch of our characters decide to go to the park and have fun a demon attack happened and three people got injured one guy i don't remember his name ariadne and then barbara Lightwood. Let's talk about the fact that she got attacked twice. The first time it happened in the ballroom, basically James goes into the demon world. He sees Barbara Lightwood getting dragged underneath and then it actually happened when he comes back to the real world. And then of course this demon attack at the park, she was one of the victims. And honestly, by that point I was like, something is going on because she got attacked twice this is not a coincidence i'm not gonna lie the first time i read that demon attack i thought three of our characters died so that's why i texted sandy like oh my god they died but then in the next chapter they're not fine or anything like that they're unconscious so i was like oh wait never mind <laughs> they're alive but i kid you not chapters later barbara actually dies and i was so fucking sad knowing that she's the child of sophie and gideon and i love them but not just that she's like the sister of thomas and eugenia i think we don't see eugenia at all maybe like once but still we don't know her but thomas thomas oh my god this giant soft boy is devastated that his sister has died but not just that oliver i think he was the fiance of barbara i could be wrong boyfriend fiance i don't know but i know that they were courting each other or whatever they did back in the days minutes before barbara died she clawed oliver so there were like marks all over his wrist or something and then days later he dies i could not believe that he died tatiana i don't like her i don't like her since clockwork princess the fact that she blames her brothers and will on the death of her husband and her father and she keeps saying that they murdered her father blah 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 but it's like well yeah we kind of had to because your father has turned into a demonic worm her husband died that was unfortunate but at the same time she's blaming everything on will and um gabriel and gideon and honestly it's just pissing me off because she won't shut the fuck up now let's quickly talk about grace I don't like her. I don't like her since the midnight air and that shit came out years ago. I don't like her when she asked James to marry her as mundane. She's literally asking him to leave his family behind, to leave his friends, parents, 
sister everything behind to marry her she's so manipulative and this is like the first example all right let's talk about charles fairchild i don't like this kid he's literally willing to do whatever it takes to be the council so we learned that charles is i believe he's gay i'm not sure about his sexuality but in this book he is in a relationship with alistair carstairs and honestly i was taken by surprise because i thought that alistair and thomas had like a thing but i guess not but still Something can happen between those two characters now that Charles and Alistair are no longer together. But not just that, Charles breaks off his engagement with Ariadne while she's unconscious. She was attacked at the beginning. She's unconscious for literally this entire book. And somewhere in the middle, Charles just breaks off his engagement with her. He is engaged to Grace Blackthorn. I was so shook. I was like, what the fuck just happened? In one chapter, she's asking James to marry her. He says no. I kid you not, in like the next chapter, or like two chapters, I don't know. We learn that Grace is gonna marry Charles. She wants to get married to get the fuck away from Tatiana. But at the same time, I feel like they're working together because of the bracelet thing. Or she's being controlled by Tatiana. I just don't know what's going on with Grace. But right now, I don't like her and it sucks because I can give her the benefit of the doubt. But at the same time, I'd rather not do it. I know I feel bad but at the same time I don't like Grace I don't like Charles either he's just so so shitty and I feel so bad for Alistair and the thing is before reading this book I did not like him and I will explain why but I feel so bad for him because we see this conversation between Charles and Alistair and he mentions the fact that he's very hurt that Charles is like engaged to women even though we know that they're in a real relationship and the fact that Charles keeps repeating that he's doing it for them but we know that he's not he's doing it because he wants to be the counsel now Grace, I think she has compulsion. I think her ability is much different from anything we have ever seen because I don't remember reading books where we have characters that are like siren. We see it with James, but I feel like it's really subtle. The most obvious one is with Matthew. It's like at the end of this chapter, I forgot which one to be honest. She's like talking to Matthew and Matthew is like cussing her out for breaking James' heart. And then she says something like, kiss me, kiss me right now. And then they end up kissing. It's literally the exact same thing that she said to James at the park she tells them both to kiss her and they both kiss her I really want to learn more about Grace and I really want to learn more about Charles because I want to know why he's such a shady person Anna Lightwood let's talk about Anna because I love Anna Lightwood she has big dick energy okay I love her so much she's her own person and she is so great because she's very protective and she's also very observant and she's resourceful so I really like Anna every exquisite thing I really love that show story and if you have not read it I really recommend it because we get to see a background history of Anna Lightwood and Ariadne so read that is really good now let's talk about this scene this is definitely one of the best scenes I have ever read ever so this is after Grace breaks up with James and we see him like thinking about Cordelia and I'm like yes 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 think about her think about her she's the one for you so we see them in this whispering room and they made out i was so happy because i was so shook it was written so well like it's so hot and sexy and then these two characters you don't understand i shipped them since the fucking beginning and just seeing them making out like this i was so happy and then when james go right to her breast my boy I'm so proud. That scene, one of the best shit ever. Chef's kiss. 10 out of 10, it was amazing. And then of course we see Magnus Bane and I was so happy to see him again because I love Magnus Bane. I didn't realize that he's gonna come back. So when he did, I was like really, really happy. Let's quickly talk about Elias Carstairs because he is an important character. He is the father of Cordelia and Alistair. We learned that he's a drunk. Sona and Alistair know about it except Cordelia, like she didn't know about it. I feel really bad for her because now her image of her father has been distorted. She looks up to him, but but now she's not so sure. That thing happened in Idris. He was the one who sent the other people to be killed. And then of course the next day he doesn't remember what happened. So it just looks so bad. And I feel so, so, so bad for Cordelia. And now knowing the backstory of this, I kind of understand why Alistair is so bitter. Because like I said, before this book, I did not like him. I have read other short stories and he's always the bully. He really did some really, really shitty things. So I really hope he can be redeemed in the next book. I feel bad for him but at the same time i'm not ready to like forgive him and just praise him because he did do a lot of shitty things and there are reasons why 
Matthew don't like him. Matthew doesn't like him and honestly he has every reason to not like him. So Lucy Herondale, we don't really talk about her but I think she is so fucking adorable. She is such a little sister because every time James gets roped into this demon thing, she's like, what about me? I'm like right here. I'm also the daughter of Will and Tessa. So her power is that she can call the dead and I kid you not I was like what the fuck and now we finally know who is Tessa's father and his name is Bilio he is one of the princes of hell he wants James body because turns out he loves humans but he cannot walk among them so he's like I need your body because you're my blood in this book we see Cordelia using Cortana to like bring down um what the fuck is his name Bilio <laughs> sorry after that happened they go back to the real world and then we see James almost dying because earlier Christopher got attacked and then Christopher like scratched him. This virus is infecting other people really quickly so James was about to die and I was like fuck this. And then Chessie saves him with his last breath. I really want to talk about Alistair and Cordelia because I think they're really great when it comes to their sibling relationship. It's so pure, it's so sweet, and it's so realistic because like we see them annoying each other but then um, after this whole battle we see Alistair carrying Cordelia. I honestly love their relationship. It's so wholesome. I kid you not, after that battle scene I know that something bad will happen because we have like 75 pages left. So I was like oh Oh my god what's gonna happen now so grace she comes back she grabs james and she puts on the silver bracelet and i was like what the fuck? Grace demands James to kill the automaton in the Black Thorn Manor. So they have to go to Idris for that. James, Cordelia, and Matthew, they go. They burn back the fucking house. So we have this meeting. And immediately, Tatiana blames everything on James. The fact that the Black Thorn Manor is burned down and all these things. So I'm like, maybe Grace sets him up. In this meeting, Cordelia literally stands up and announces that he was not the one burning down the manor because they were together in her bedroom. Everyone was shook. I was shook as well. And then, oh, oh my god, oh my god. And then James proposes to Cordelia. They're together for the wrong reason. It upsets me greatly because I love these two characters so much and I want them to be together. But not like this. He proposes to her. She says, but James, you don't love me. And he says, no, I don't. Once he said that, I was crushed. I was so devastated because it hurts so much the fucking bracelet someone cut this bracelet off of this boy so he can realize that he loves cordelia please but not just that he thinks that cordelia doesn't love him as well that makeout scene in the whispering room is just a ruse okay like it's completely fake it's not real and i was like you guys are tainting that scene for me i love that scene stop bashing on it now let's really talk about alistair carstairs because i mentioned him a lot in this video and the fact that I didn't like him before reading this book because he was a bully. I feel like his character is relatable for many people because this is someone who doesn't like his Persian identity. Someone asks Cordelia why her brother dyes his hair blonde and she says something like, oh, it's because he doesn't like his heritage. He doesn't like the fact that his skin is brown. He doesn't like the fact that his hair is like really dark. And then at the end of the book, we see him dyeing it back to its original color. So that's like a step of him accepting himself but at this engagement party, everything comes back and it bites him in the ass and I could not believe what I was reading. Matthew hates him. With that, I understand because you really need to read Cast Long Shadows to understand why Matthew is drunk a majority of this book. Why Matthew hates Alistair Carstairs. You really need to read that to understand because in Jane of Gold, it mentions something about committing murder. Matthew just explodes and say that Alistair is the one who make a rumors about Gideon being Matthew's father. In addition to that, we learned that Alistair made up some fucked up story. I don't even remember if he was the one who made up the story or he just passed it along. We learned that Sophie cried, Gideon is like really sad, and then the sisters are like really ashamed, and Thomas is just really pissed off. He tells Alistair to fuck off basically, and then just seeing Alistair crying literally makes me so sad because he's like trying to fix his mistake by befriending 
surrounding these people but at the same time they all hate him like Matthew hates him in particular so he cries and then he leaves the party it just hurts a lot so I really think he is going to redeem himself I really really believe that Charles Fairchild oh my god why is this man a piece of shit they're literally at James and Cordelia's engagement party and then this man literally stands up and decides to talk about him and Grace and the fact that they're engaged and they're gonna get married and I was like what the fuck is wrong with you and then of course we learned that Alistair breaks up with Charles I think that's so important because Charles is a piece of shit like I said this relationship between Alistair and Charles is so unhealthy you can tell that Alistair is like really upset and I'm so glad that he breaks things off with Charles because let's face it Charles is a piece of shit honestly I forgot to talk about Christopher Lightwood I love that he's very similar to Henry because they always do experiments I'm so happy to see him going out of his way to create the cure even though he got injured and he could not put in like the final touches he put in a lot of effort to make sure that everyone is going to be alive at the end i like christopher i really hope that we will see him more in the next book because i feel like comparing him to like thomas and anna and alistair and cordelia and james lucy i don't know much about him like all i know is that he likes to experiment like henry okay that's about it let's quickly talk about matthew fairchild basically at this engagement party james and cordelia are dancing matthew makes comments about their marriage or like their engagement to Magnus Bane but from the tone I have a feeling that he does like Cordelia honestly it's crazy that it takes me this long to notice it because I kid you not I did not notice it until the last chapter of this book I personally don't think that he has a thing for Cordelia I really hope he doesn't because I just want Cordelia and James to be together when it comes to Matthew I just want him to recover okay this is a serious issue I really want to see him talking to his mother Charlotte I love Charlotte and we see her once in this book okay it's kind of ridiculous Henry we saw him once and I want to see him more because I love Henry so much we have this scene of Anna and Ariadne and I love them together we see Ariadne wanting Anna back and I was just like god damn because she said something about how she will win her back I love them together I ship them very very much and I'm so glad that she's not engaged to Charles because Ariane deserves so much better than Charles Fairchild so at the end of this book we learned that Elias Carstairs is gonna come back from Itris and of course Sona oh my god Sona is pregnant in this book the final chapter we see James and Cordelia dancing and Cordelia is just thinking to herself like oh wow this year is gonna be interesting huh it's gonna be so complicated and I feel so bad for her because she has to be married to him but at the same time he doesn't love her <laughs> and now we get to the epilogue and i kid you not i was so shook because we see tatiana working with bilio and then the silver bracelet I need to know what it is and what it can do. It's mentioned again in the epilogue. I think he wants James to wear that bracelet when they attack him again. And also this scene pissed me off. I was so angry when I learned that he killed Barbara Lightwood as a gift for Tatiana. Barbara is like her niece. They're related to each other but she's just so vengeful and ridiculous. So when I learned that Barbara died because of Tatiana like I was just really really disappointed and angry we learned that she's going to the Adam and Citadel and of course she's gonna strike it from within because Billy was like you should do that Ugh, I hate this <laughs> I hate this so much it's just so complicated but at the same time I'm so excited for the second book because I heard that it's gonna be painful according to Cassie Clare because on Twitter she's just like haha this is just the first book and lastly there is a short story at the end of this book it's called Fairy Tale of London it's basically the wedding day of Will and Tessa of course I love it it's really sweet <laughs> I cry I cry in this um short story but then also why is Tatiana at the wedding I thought we don't like her and then of course Will and Tessa have sex boom the end of the story I have been here for at least an hour my voice is going away and I feel lightheaded because I need to eat lunch you know but I'm so glad that I filmed this video it's so much fun and I cannot wait to read Chain of Iron because that is the second book of this trilogy so that is it for today's video I hope you guys enjoy it thank you so much for watching please like and subscribe for more videos and I will see you guys later goodbye <laughs>